sort of take us through your examination of a Parkinson's patient in your office. What is the actual test that you're carrying out? You know, one of the things we tell the residents what we train is that, you know, when, you, when you've seen one Parkinson patient, you've seen one Parkinson patient because they can be very different. They can have different complaints. They can have different issues. And so we cater our exam to, you know, what they're experiencing. That said, there are certain standard things that we do across the board, and a lot of it does hinge on these movement tests, trying to quantify and characterize the nature of the tremor, the nature of the slowness, the stiffness. So for example, we would do things like assess the way, how quickly they can do various movements, and does it get slower over time? Does it get sort of caught up? Uh, we'll do the same with their arms and their legs. We'll take a look at their tremor. Now, sometimes people only have tremor in certain situations, just when they're walking or when they're stressed. So we may give them mental challenges and see if this particular tremor comes out. Um, and then we'll check their tone. Tone isn't something you think about, but we have a natural sort of fluidity to mm -hmm. our movements, which in the absence of dopamine can become a little ratchety. And so uh, a specialist can sort of pick that up and characterize it as mild or moderate. Uh, and we'll also watch the way people walk. I mean, walking is such a complex motor task. It's so automatic. We've all been walking since, you know, we're two or however old. Right. Um, that it's automatic. But when, when you're losing the dopamine, certain things are not so automatic anymore. And you start to see the component parts of the arm swing and the stride length. And then we'll look at their balance, which is more often affected later in Parkinson's, but you sometimes get early hints of some postural instability. Mm -hmm. So it's really a looking at various aspects of the way that we move and, and trying to help figure out whether they fit into that particular category. Are there any specific devices or instruments that you use to help objectify or to analyze these movements? You certainly can. There's no shortage of devices. And I know, Ritesh, <laughs> you know a lot about, uh, about these sort of more technological mm -hmm. uh, devices we have now to measure uh, really scientifically the, our, the way our foot hits the ground right. or the way that our movements are in, in over time. So those are important, and I think they're particularly important when we're looking at clinical trials and new medicines and interventions and maybe progression over time. But in the setting of a general office visit, um, at this point in time, it's, it's usually mm -hmm. just the me and the patient and, sure. uh, and the exam. And how accurate is this exam? Are there any studies to show how accurate a, a movement disorders assessment is in, in diagnosing Parkinson's? Uh, there are a number of studies, and they're humbling, actually. Um, movement disorder specialists, perhaps not surprisingly, are, are generally better at it because they see a lot of it. Mm -hmm. But even so, um, there can be a lot of confounds. There can be situations where somebody has something that's going to end up being an atypical. Mm -hmm. uh, but if, depending on, obviously, the degree of involvement, um, movement disorder specialists can have a pretty good you know, sensitivity in terms of picking up these. Right, and I think that there's been a number of autopsy studies from the 90s, that you, which you're f well acquainted with, that, you know, shows that the uh, uh, predictive value of a, of a neurologist capable of diagnosing Parkinson's is about upwards of 90%, especially, and we'll talk about this in, um, uh, later on, especially if they demonstrate a robust response to uh, the Parkinson's medications. Right. Yeah. 